that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, My servant does not draw closer to me except by doing what is obligatory. And then he draws closer by doing optional deeds, extra deeds, until I love him. And when I love him, I become the eyes with which he sees. I become the ears with which he hears. I become the hands with which he grasps. And I become the feet with which he walks. In another narration, I become the heart with which he reflects. And if he is to ask me for anything, I will for sure give it to him. And if he is to seek, seek refuge in me, I will for sure protect him. And, and the, the glorious, the one who holds the heavens and the earth, he says, I do not hesitate to do anything in my dominion, in my kingdom. This is all his. He says, I don't hesitate to do anything in my kingdom, except to take the life of that servant of mine, whom I love, that he dislikes to die, because I dislike to displease him. La ilaha illallah. And the Prophet wasallam, he came to teach us the meaning of La ilaha illallah. And the meaning of La ilaha illallah is vast. On the surface, it's La ilaha illallah. There is no one worthy of worship except Allah. But as you dive into it, it's an ocean. It's an ocean that is full of wondrous experiences. And every turn and everything that you do, when you're in a state of saying La ilaha illallah, and you start to recognize it with your heart, that there is absolutely none worthy of worship. There is absolutely no power. There is, no, there is nothing except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's reality. And you dive into that, you start to experience the fruits of it, the, 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 the taste of it. The life of a human being is completely transformed. The Prophet ﷺ taught us in many different ways. One time the Sahaba, they were walking and they're going uphill and they're saying Allahu Akbar. And they're walking downhill, they're saying SubhanAllah. Allahu Akbar. As they're walking up, SubhanAllah, as they're walking down. And one Sahabi, he was saying something else. And Rasulullah said, what are you saying? He said, I'm saying, La hawla wa la quwata illa billah. La hawla wa la quwata illa billah. There is no might or power except by Allah. He said, this is one of the treasures of Jannah. This is one of the treasures of Jannah. To recognize that it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has all the power, all the ability, and nothing you do is by your own self. You cannot do anything by yourself. And this is what our teachers teach us, the, the great scholars, the great arifin, the people that know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They said, you know, you wake up in the morning, you rub your eyes and you, you get out of bed. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he taught us, as soon as you wake up, you have to say, Alhamdulillah alladhi ahyana ba'dama amatana. All praises to the one who brought us to life after we were dead. You cannot wake up except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has allowed you to wake up. And He's given you life. So you wake up and you open your eyes and you're able to see. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Alam yaj'al lahu aynayn. Didn't we give you the eyes to see? You think you can see? But your eyes are from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the vision that you have, our scholars said, is there so that you can know who's Al-Basir. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's name is Al-Basir. What does that mean? The one who sees. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I created you so you can know me. So I give you vision. So when you see, you, you recognize who's the one who sees. Well, who is Sami'ul Basir? And he's the one who hears. You want to know who's the one who hears? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you ears so you can hear. And your hearing is by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's hearing. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who does everything. He's the one who has all the power. He says, Qul huwa al Qadir. Say, He's the one who's, who's al Qadir. The Qadir means what? The one who's able to do things. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to be known, he gave you abilities so you can move your muscles. You think you can move your muscles by yourself? Right? But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's His power, it's His ability that He's made you a Khalifa on the earth. He said, here's, here's, the, here's the meaning of Qadr. Live it and experience it in yourself. Everything that you see in this horizons, in the, inside yourself, these are all ayat telling you about Allah. سَنُرِيهِمْ آيَاتِنَا فِي الْآفَاقِ وَفِي أَنفُسِهِمْ حَتَّى يَتَبَيَّنَ لَهُمْ أَنَّهُ الْحَقِّ that you go out and you look at the, the world, you explore the universe, look at the stars, the galaxies, the flowers, the bees, all of it is telling you about Allah. But you look inside, you have the ability to move things, you have the ability to grasp things. What does it mean? I become the eyes with which he sees. I become the ears with which he hears. I become the hands with which he grasps. Our scholar said, by those things, you're able to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching you about his names, his, his attributes. So you have qudra, you're able to do things. You say, he's al-qadir. Your qudra, your power is limited. Your power is short-lived. Today, mashallah, you're strong. You go to the gym, you're able to lift a lot of weights. You know, mashallah, brother, you get, you're get buffing up. What happens? As you get older, you're not able to lift as much. And you say, no, no, no. He is Al-Qadr. I was just being given a taste of what it means to have Qudra. Right? Muhammad Ali, big boxer guy. He used to knock people out. And he said, I am the greatest. I am the greatest. And as he reached the end of his life, he used to say, I used to make a mistake. Allah, he's the greatest. He's the greatest. Mu'min. Allah is the greatest. But he was, giving a, he was given a taste of greatness so he can know what it means to be great. You know, when they, when they were studying the stars, they, they had the Hubble Space Telescope. They brought out these telescopes and they're looking at the space like they had never seen before in 1994. And they saw the Big Dipper Galaxy, the Big Dipper Constellation. You know, the arrangement of stars that looks like a Big Dipper. They noticed under the tail of it, there's a small patch of space that is darker than the rest of space. And this is the size of a quarter from 100 yards away. Very tiny spot. But the question that the astronomers they had was, they said, look, uh, we wonder what's going on there. Can we book some time with the Hubble Space Telescope to, to observe the light that's coming from there, to see what is there, why is it darker? They said, sure. They had 10 days. And they start collecting the light that's coming from that one tiny spot, size of a quarter from 100 yards away. And as they start collecting the light, they found that in that one tiny dot, there's over 3,000 galaxies. Each galaxy with trillions of stars. And we say, Allahu Akbar. His name is Al-Kabir. You look at the creation, you have no idea what greatness is. The earth is like a speck of dust in the space, in the universe, and it's just floating about. Right? We walk on the earth. This is why Kibr is such a big deal. Is this, this insignificant creature thinks he's the greatest. Whereas the universe, you look at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, do you see the creation of the heavens and the earth? Is this great or is your creation? What do you think? Allahu Akbar. Right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He reveals His names and attributes in the creation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Our scholars have said the word alameen means the worlds, not just one world, multiple worlds, realities upon realities upon realities. And the root of all of these worlds is alam. Alameen comes from alam. And so the, the entirety of the realities that you and I are able to experience and what is beyond our vision and beyond our capacity is all there infused with knowledge. What kind of knowledge? There is only one knowledge. It's the knowledge of Allah. Everything else is actually directly or indirectly related to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Somebody studies biomedical engineering. Somebody studies chemistry. Somebody studies uh, astronomy. Somebody studies biology. Somebody studies, you know, the, the sacred sciences. Somebody else studies economy. All of these things, whatever you study, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, seek knowledge. And, and if, you, if you go down the path of knowledge, whatever knowledge, whatever path you take, the end of it is what? The end of it you'll arrive to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because every field of knowledge is vast. Even knowledges that are considered bad. You know that in the time of Musa alayhi salam, there are some magicians. They studied their sihr and they were, they were powerful in their sihr. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَجَاءَ بِسِحْرٍ عَظِيمٍ Because of their knowledge of their sihr. When they encountered Musa alayhi salam, they came to know Allah. وَأُلْقِيَ السَّحَرَةُ سَاجِدِينَ They all bowed down. قَالُوا آمَنَّا بِرَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ We believe in the Lord of the worlds. Why? How did they arrive to that conclusion? They knew because of the knowledge. They, whatever path of knowledge you take. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He's, He's placed his signs in the horizons and within yourself. Sometimes, you know, we think there's, there's a world of multiplicity. We're dealing with this and we're dealing with that and we're being pulled in multiple different directions. The great Arifin, they said, no, the reality is it's your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the only reality. All that exists is how you're going to interact with Allah. Because whatever comes in front of you is by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
whatever appears before you is by the will and the, and the, and the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So much so that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, on the day of judgment, a man will be asked, Oh my servant, I was hungry and you didn't feed me. He says, Ya Allah, how can you be hungry and you are Rabbul Alameen and you are the creator of the heavens and the earth? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, Don't you know so and so servant of mine was hungry and you didn't feed him? Had you fed him, you would have found me there. He says, Oh my servant, I was, I was sick and you didn't visit me. Ya Allah, how can you be sick? He says, Don't you know so and so my servant was sick and you didn't visit him? Had you done that, you would have found me there. Oh my servant, I was naked, you didn't cover me. You didn't clothe me. Ya Allah, you are Rabbul Alameen. Don't you know so and so of my servant was exposed to you and you didn't cover? Had you done that, you would have found me there. In other words, Rasulullah Sallallahu is teaching us your interaction with Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is behind the hijab. And the hijab is the creation in front of you. It's your parents. It's the people around you. It's your own self. Allah is closer to you than your own self. But all of that is there so that you can interact and you can, you can develop this relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you can draw close to Him. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us in a hadith, and, and, and the authenticity is, uh, is, you know, there's scholars, they have debates about it. But he said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Isa alayhi wa sallam, he was walking by a group of people, he saw them worshipping. And, and they looked very, you know, tired and their skin had been dried out. He said, who are you people? They said, we are Ibadullah, we're worshippers of Allah. He said, Allah has told us about the reality of Jahannam. And we're scared. So we want to, to avoid that. So we, we're engaging in worship. He said, keep doing what you're doing. And he left them. He came across another group of people. You know, and he saw them worshipping and they had lush cheeks. They, had, they were very happy. He said, who are you people? They said, we are Ibadullah. Allah has informed us about Jannah and we are enticed by it and we desire it. He said, keep doing what you're doing. And he told both of them, you are afraid of something that is a creation and you're desiring something that is a creation. And he came to the third group of people. They're worshiping Allah. He said, who are you people? They said, we are Ibadullah, worshippers of Allah. He said, Allah has made himself known to us and we have fallen in love with him. So we're worshiping him. And Isa alayhi salam, he joined them in worship. You know, it's all the things that we desire in this world. Everything that you see, everything that is, you know, even in the Akhirah, Jannah and Hellfire, all of that, these are all created realities. But the one who created them is greater than all of that. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. The one who created them is greater than all of that. And he wants to be known. And so he brought all these signs. He says, look in the horizons, look inside yourself. Even when you laugh and when you cry. Even when you laugh and you cry. You think this is just circumstances and the things that's happening. No. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, wa huwa adhaka wa abka. He's the one who makes you laugh. And he's the one who makes you cry. And he's the one who brought you to life. And he's the one who causes you to die. All of your existence, all of this reality revolves around the circle of inna lillahi. We came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we return to Him. So, so it's like we come out from the, 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 the arena of proximity and intimacy with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you're given a taste of distance. So you can long and you can yearn and then you're brought back to that reality. La ilaha illallah. And so who is Allah? Because this whole affair is about Allah. It's not about you, it's not about me, it's about Allah. And that's what every messenger, every prophet had come to teach. It's about Allah. La ilaha illallah. Don't turn your attention to this or that. Don't turn your attention to your desires or your hawa or your nafs or, or this thing. Your attention should only be to who? Allah. This is the, so, so who is Allah? Some people they know, some people they have yet to know. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He teaches us, when the moment of death comes and the veils are lifted, then the eyes can see. You know, فَكَسَفْنَ عَنْكَ غِطَاؤُكَ فَبَصَرُكَ الْيَوْمَ حَدِيدٌ Then you will see with penetrating insight. A man came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and said, who will be the judge on the day of judgment? You know, who will be the judge? He thought maybe Allah will assign somebody to be the judge over them. Because people had representatives like this. 
Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allah. The man became happy and he left because he knew about Allah. Right? Some people, if you tell them, Allah is going to judge you, they start shaking with fear. Allah knows you more intimately than you know yourself. He's a ra'uf. Ra'uf means what? The one who knows. The one who understands. There's million reasons that people are the way they are. Millions and millions of reasons that people have, a, they have the character, they have the behavior, they have the circumstances that they have. Nobody knows whatever factors went into that person making that decision except Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He describes Himself, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, the most merciful, the exceptionally merciful. Who's that? Malik Yawm din He is the owner of the Day of Judgment. Right? When you're going to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, those that love to meet Allah, Allah loves to meet them. If you love to meet Allah, Allah loves to meet you. And those that hate to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah hates to meet them. And the Sahaba, they said, Ya Rasulullah, which one of us would, would love to die? In other words, in order to meet Allah, you have to do what? You have to die. The, the Prophet sallallahu said, that's, that's not what I'm talking about. It's normal to, to not want to die. This is normal. When you cross the road, you have to look to the left and right. This is a natural instinct to protect the life force that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands you, وَلَا تَقْتُلُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ Don't kill yourselves. إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ عَلَيْكُمْ رَحِيمًا Allah, He's merciful to you. All of this life experience is part of His mercy. No matter what circumstances you go through, it's Allah's mercy. If you have difficulty, the Prophet ﷺ said, strange affair of the believer. When they have difficulty, it's good for them. When they have ease, it's good for them. Whatever happens is good for them. This is <laughs> only for the believers. There's a story of, the, of a man, he had horse, you know, a b- bunch of horses. His horses ran away. All the neighbors that came to him, they said, you know, you poor thing, your horses ran away. What a great calamity. He said, it's a good thing or a bad thing, I don't know. Next day, his horses came back, and there's seven wild horses followed his horses. So, so all the neighbors, they came out, they're jealous now. They said, oh, how lucky you are. You, your horses had run away, and, and they're back. On top of that, you got seven extra horses. That's like having Lamborghinis back in the day, you know. You all these horses, you're so wealthy now. He said, it's a good thing or a bad thing? What? I don't really know. Next day, his, his oldest son, he tried to break one of the new horses. You can't just ride a horse, you know. You have to tame it, you have to teach it, you have to train it, and then you ride it. And, and, and it's symbolic of the human nafs. The human nafs, you can't just let it go loose. You have to tame it. You have, so the son tried to jump on the horse and try to control it, but the horse overpowered him, and he fell, and he broke his leg. And the doctors came and said, he will never walk again. So the neighbors came. They said, oh, we knew these horses were bad news. Look, you poor son, he'll never walk again. You know, had a terrible thing that happened to you and your family said, it's a good thing or what? A bad thing? I don't really know. Next day, the military shows up and they go knocking door to door. They say, hey, uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a call to war. Everybody has to come out and join the army. Whoever can walk, whoever can fight, it has to, has to go. So all their sons left, except this guy's son, his leg is broken. So they came to him and said, you're so lucky your son broke his leg. <laughs> you know, our sons, we don't know if we're going to see them again. But your son is right in front of you. He said, it's a good thing or a bad thing. What? I don't really know. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he told us, you know Allah, you don't have to know the future. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَلَا تَقُولَنَّ لِشَيْءٍ إِنِّي فَاعِلٌ ذَلِكَ غَدَى Don't say I'm going to do this tomorrow. إِلَّا أَنْ يَشَاءَ Allah." So our hopes is not in the future. Our hopes is in what? In Allah. Our desire is not in this attainment or that attainment. Our desire is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, and, and you don't know the value of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا قَدَّرَ اللَّهَ حَقَّ قَدْرِ They have not given Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala his true value. Here, I'll give you another example. There was a king, he had four wives. I'm not encouraging you do that. But this guy had four wives. He loved one of his wives more than the others. So, so the, the, the other wives, they kind of got jealous. They said, oh king, why do you love her more than us? What does she have that we don't have? We have style and we have this and we have the swag. Well, how come you like her more? The king said, I will show you. Please move forward, make room. Please move forward, make room. The king said, I will show you. So 
He took his treasure house, he opened the doors, and he called his wives. He said, Oh my, my dear wives, المزيد, this is the day of increase, and this is the day of gifts, and this is the day of, day of giving. Go in there, whatever you put your hands on is for you. You can keep it. So the other wives, they got very happy. You know, they just rushed in. Imagine you go to the mall, and somebody at the door gives you a, a credit card. Platinum, go buy whatever you want, it's on me. How are you going to feel? Right, so this is what, what's going through their minds. They're like, really? Anything, anything you want. This is the king's treasure house. Go and grab whatever you like. One of them goes and grabs a box of treasures, you know, pearls and necklaces and diamonds and rubies. Another one is picking out the most exquisite dress. How does this look on me? And they're running around back and forth, grabbing this, grabbing that, whatever they can carry. And the wife that the king had loved the most, she's standing by the door. She says, oh king, anything I place my hand on is for me. The king says, of course, it's for you. And she places her hand on the shoulder of the king. All of that treasure belongs to who? What do you think? You want a big house? Who does that belong to? You want a promotion? Who does that belong to? You want to get married to a spouse that is you know, like righteous, will take care of you? Who does that belong to? This dunya, who does it belong to? Akhirah, who does it belong to? Yawmuddin, who does it belong to? All, everything in the heavens and the earth, all the kingdoms, it all belongs to him. And he's saying, look, you can either go after my treasures or you can come after me. What do you want, O oh, human beings? We have honored you. We have, we have carried you over the seas and the land and we have allowed you to build and we have favored you. What has he favored you with? He has offered you himself, subhanahu wa ta'ala. You can have a relationship with Allah that is unlike anything. Angels don't have that. The other creation of Allah don't have that. You have the ability to rise beyond any other creation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you know, wasjud waqtarab, make sujood and come close. It's invitation. Come. And if you want to ask about Allah, وَإِذَا سَعَلَكَ عَبْدِ عَنِّي عِبَادِ عَنِّي What does he say? فَإِنِّي قَرِيب I'm close to you. You don't have to feel distant. Shaitan will want to make you feel distant. You know, our scholars, they, they created all these lists of, of kabair and sagair and this sin and that sin. You know, the real arifin, they said, you know what's the real major sin? It's not this or that or this or that. The real major sin is actually feeling that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not going to forgive you. Is losing hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy. Is, is losing hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's acceptance. That's the real major sin. Everything else shaitan will use to come and put a rift between you and your beloved. That's it. Everything else shaitan will use. How can you stand and pray after having done this? You hypocrite, you do this, you do that. And then what happens? A person who listens to shaitan will say, Yeah, I don't know what's the point of my prayer. I don't feel anything. And they'll leave it. And they'll re leave their relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Over what? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa gave us so many examples. A person committed hundred murders. Allah forgive him. A person did some major sins. Allah forgive him. So many examples. A man came out, saw the stars. Remember the Hubble Space Telescope example? A man came out, he saw the stars. And he saw a series, shu'ara. He pointed at it, he said, Ashadu anna laka rabban qad khalaqak. I bear witness, you have a Lord who created you. Allah forgive him everything. La ilaha illallah. You don't know Allah. Right? We, our hope and our desire and our want is only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And whatever comes, it comes. Alhamdulillah, ala kulli hal. We are pleased with Allah upon everything. With everything. And on the day of judgment, the Prophet said, when people enter Jannah and some go to hellfire, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will call the people of Jannah. O people of Jannah. And he will ask them, are you pleased? Are you pleased? And the people will say, how can we be not pleased, Ya Allah? You know, we, you have honored us and you have entered into Jannah and you have removed from us the fear and everything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will tell them, I will grant you something today that is better than all of that. I am pleased with you. Allahu Akbar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, I am pleased with you and I will never be angry with you. La ilaha illallah. Umar radiallahu anhu said, Every time we would see Rasulullah sallallahu angry, we would say, Raditu billahi rabba, wa bil islami deena, wa bi Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, nabiyan wa rasoola. And he said, radiallahu anhu, that the Prophet sallallahu anger would subside. 
You would not get angry as soon as they would say that. Why? Because if you're pleased with Allah here, you say, I'm pleased with you, Ya Allah, here on earth while you're alive. What about the day of judgment? What do you think is going to happen? What about in the grave? What do you think is going to happen? What about in Jannah? What do you think is going to happen? Some people will go to Jannah and then they will, they will realize the pleasure of Allah is greater than Jannah. Some people will be honored to know that here today. And they'll, they'll hold on to whatever Allah gives them and they'll say, I'm pleased with you, Ya Allah. Radiallahu anhum. You're pleased with Allah, Allah is pleased with you. La ilaha illallah. Aquli qawli hadha astaghfirullah alaykum fa astaghfiruh innahu huwa al-ghafur rahim Allahumma ta'ala. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. So if you forget everything I I said, remember there is nothing more precious than the words لا إله إلا الله. A man came to رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم said يا رسول الله teach me the best of words that no man before me or after me will ever say anything better than it. He said صلى الله عليه وسلم say لا إله إلا الله. He said, Ya Rasulullah, everybody says that. He said, I don't know anything better than that. On the Day of Judgment, you have your scales. Somebody has mountains of sins on one side of the scale, and he's got La ilaha illallah on the other side. La ilaha illallah is heavier than the entire universe. La ilaha illallah is greater than the entire, entire cosmos, all of existence, because that is the essence of truth. And, and, and be frequent in saying La ilaha illallah, and reflect on it and its meanings. And, and, and what does it mean? To negate and to affirm. La ilaha illallah. Make it a practice. Because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, whoever dies and their last words are, La ilaha illallah, dakhala al-jannah. They enter jannah. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make our last words, La ilaha illallah, with understanding. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us good endings. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us servants that are pleased with Allah, that are grateful to Allah. Ya Rabbil Alameen, Ya Allah, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim. You're the one, Ya Allah, who granted us everything, Ya Allah. All the blessings is from you, Ya Allah. And we admit that before you, Ya Allah. And we are grateful to you, Ya Allah. And we admit before you our shortcomings and our mistakes, Ya Allah. Forgive us, Ya Allah. Because no one can forgive except you, Ya Allah. Ya Rabbil Alameen, you are Lord, Ya Allah. You are Master. You are our Creator, Ya Allah. Nothing exists except by your will, Ya Allah. Ya Arham ar we ask you to grant us good life, Ya Allah. In dunya and akhirah, Ya Allah. Grant us the best of this world and the best of the next, Ya Allah. And we ask Ya Rabbi al Alameen, grant us the most noble, the most highest attainment, Ya Allah. Your presence, Ya Allah, and your love, Ya Allah. And make your love more beloved to us, Ya Allah, than ourselves and our families, Ya Allah. Than the wealth that you have given us, Ya Allah. Than the blessings you have given us, Ya Allah. And the cold water and the comforts, Ya Allah. Ya Rabbi al Alameen, you are the one who is in charge of every atom in the universe, Ya Allah. Every everything that is moving and everything that is still is by your will, Ya Allah. Grant us healing, Ya Allah. And grant us shifa, Ya Allah. Those that are struggling, Ya Rabbil Alameen, remove the obstacles from our path, Ya Allah. Those that are going through hardships in their families, unite our hearts, Ya Allah. Those that are struggling in their finances, provide for us, Ya Allah. Halal in tayyib rizq, Ya Allah. So that we depend on no one other than you, Ya Allah. Ya Rabbil Alameen, there is no power or might except from you, Ya Allah. Grant us tawfiq to do what is good, Ya Allah. And the tawfiq to avoid what is bad, Ya Allah. Allah. And, and grant us, Ya Rabbil Alameen, proximity to you, Ya Allah. And surround us with people that are beloved to you, Ya Allah. And don't let us die except in a state of Iman. And make our last words, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. Wa sallallahu alayhi sayyidina Muhammad wa alayhi wa sahbihi ajma'een. Wa akhru dawana, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Aqeem as-salaam.